So my topic is Beyond Bars, Imagining a World Without Animal Captivity. So first, I would like to ask a question to the audience. Uh, please raise your hand if you have a pet. Pretty much everyone has a pet, OK? Now imagine that pet getting stolen from you and locked in a cage, extremely small, and forced to live there their entire life. They have no control. They're being forced to eat what they're given. How do you think your pet would react? This, this is a daily occurrence for animals in, in captivity and in the wild. They're taken from their parents and they're forced to come to zoos and aquariums. And that leads me to my topic. So the first issue with zoos and aquariums is their, their, pri their priorities lie in the wrong places. They prioritize money and profit over the animal welfare and well-being. So corner, if the zoos can, make, can cut corners, that will be their goal. And in most cases, animals in these zoos and aquariums develop abnormal behaviors that are destructive to themselves. And to treat these behaviors, some zoos use tranquilizers, they use antidepressants, and they use antipsychotics. But believe it or not, that is actually one of the better cases for treating these animals. In some of the more worse cases, the animals don't receive any treatment at all. They're left in those small enclosures to deal with those abnormal behaviors by themselves. And from 1950 to current dates, we've seen a 50% increase in wildlife deaths in zoos and aquariums. So the first major issue is the small, stressful, and unsuitable environments these wild animals are put into. For example, dolphins live in areas that are 200,000 times smaller than they would in the wild. And elephants are forced to live, are forced to live in such small areas that they can't even walk 20 kilometers daily, which is what they would in the wild. Due to these unsuitable environments and unstimulating environments, as I said before, they develop abnormal, unnatural behaviors. And this, this is called zoochosis, which it's defined as a mental disorder present in captive animals that manifest in these harmful behaviors. Some behaviors could be pacing, uh, some could be swimming in circles, some could be gnawing on bars. And as I said before, sometimes these animals are treated, other times these animals are not treated. So these, the, env the environment isn't the only thing that influences and causes these behaviors. Uh, there's also physical changes to the animals in these environments. Physical changes such as the cerebral cortex and the capillaries thinning, uh, the synaptic connections weakening, and the amygdala uh, shrinking in size. And these brain altercations or alterations lead to poor decision making, reduced blood flow to the, to the brain, worse memory, and worse information processing. Now, with these new behaviors, there is one major issue. These new behaviors eventually lead to the loss of natural behaviors, such as food finding, avoiding predators, or raising their young. Um, this leads to the animals becoming dependent on their caretakers. So once they live in these zoos for long enough, they no longer have the ability to live in the wild because they would not be able to survive without the necessary knowledge um, to hunt, to raise their young, and have natural tendencies. So in this image, we can see uh, a roadside zoo, which is one of the worst cases 
for animals in captivity. Um, roadside zoos typically don't make an effort at all to match their environment. As you can see here, this tiger is positioned on what is a wood box in an extremely small cage. And you can see many cages around him. him. Um, as I said before, this is like the worst case for these animals. Um, then the next level up from that would be AZA accredited zoos and aquariums, which is the AZA is the National Association of Zoos and Aquariums. Um, these, these zoos are held to higher standards, higher, higher regulations as they need to for, to get that accreditation. This leads to larger environments, efforts to match natural environments, and they lead to socialization and stimulating environments. Now, the best possible option for these animals, other than being in the wild, would be sanctuaries. Sanctuaries themselves are large open air enclosures, typically miles wide. They give these animals their, their natural amount of area they need to survive and thrive. So to take a turn, um, connecting this to humans and human captivity, we see many similar effects of captivity. So this, this image is of former prisoners of war and they came back and they showed heightened levels of PTSD and anxiety and uh, mental disorders and physical disorders that were all developed in captivity. And this is the same that happens with animals. The main difference is the publicity. When, when there's prisoners of war, usually the news shows that over zoos and aquariums because this is publicly seen as wrong. And that's, that, is, that is true, but w my point here today is also to show that zoos and aquariums are wrong in themselves. So the solution to this problem would be promoting sanctuaries and promoting the uh, replacement of, of current zoos that are large enough with these sanctuaries. Sanctuaries are opposite of zoos in both their services and their intended outcomes. Their sanctuaries intend to take animals out of hard situations and nurse them back to health and bring them back into the, into the wild. While zoos do the opposite, they either birth these animals into bad environments and enclose them there or they take them out of the wild and they bring them to zoos. So the next possible sh solution would be boycotting zoos. And with gaining, gaining support for sanctuaries and sh exposing the, the secrets of zoos and aquariums, we can get the public eye, um, get the public support to boycott these zoos and make the, the leaders of the zoos change their ways. And as I interviewed Liz Tyson, who is a sanctuary, who runs a sanctuary down in South Texas, and she's part of Born Free USA, which is a national organization that, uh, that focuses on animal captivity and the issues. And she said the best option and the most feasible option would be phasing out zoos. Phasing out zoos is, and instead of birthing animals into zoos and taking them out of the wild, you would, the, the zoos that are small enough to not be transformed into a sanctuary, you would instead let the animals live out their lives, they would pass away 
and then you wouldn't birth any more. You wouldn't take any more out of the wild. You would just let this zoo close down naturally. Now this would take decades, but it's better to start now rather than later to ensure the animal welfare. So changes need to be made with animal welfare in mind. As you've probably noticed, I've been pacing around the stage while I've been presenting. Um, this is one of the most common behaviors in tigers while in captivity. Um, in their case, they have no control. This is an abnormal behavior that develops for them. They do it unnaturally. Now I ask you, would you desire help if you were being held captive with no freedoms? Be the help you desire. Support the necessary changes to zoos and aquariums. Thank you.